Once there was a dreadful old man named Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, he was a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching old sinner. Scrooge had been in partnership for many years with Jacob Marley, so his firm was known as Scrooge and Marley. But Marley had been dead for seven years. Yes, Marley was dead, dead as a doornail. And old Scrooge lived alone and disliked everybody. He had a clerk in his office named Bob Cratchit, and he only paid the poor fellow who had a wife and four children a wage that scarcely fed him. The meager office that Cratchit sat in was like a cold, dismal little cell. When Cratchit stopped to warm his hands over the burnt-out coal, Scrooge looked up over his glasses and said, Cratchit, get on with your work. Well, you see, sir, my fire is almost out and my hands are numb. I need another bit of coal to keep warm, sir. How many times have I told you I won't have you burning up my coal as if it were rubbish? But, sir... Back to your work. Yes, sir. It was Christmas Eve, and into the office of Scrooge and Marley popped Scrooge's nephew, Fred. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Death, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Oh, come now, what right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Death, humbug. Oh, don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older, not an hour richer. <laughs> if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. Oh, Uncle. Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Well, let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. <laughs> Much good it ever has done you. Uncle, Christmas is the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their hearts freely. <laughs> and therefore, Uncle, although it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. And I say God bless it. Good for you, lad. Another word out of you, Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Good afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry with all my heart to find you so determined. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. <clears throat> well, sir, it's... Uh, it's what? It's shutting up time, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And, sir... I was wondering whether you would allow me the day off. That is, if it's convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I were to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself very ill-used, wouldn't you? And yet you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. But it's Christmas only once a year, sir. Yes, yeah, Christmas. Nothing but a poor excuse to pick a man's pocket every December the 25th. And you were clerk with 15 shillings a week and a wife and family talking about a Merry Christmas. Yeah. May I have tomorrow off, sir? I suppose you must. But be here all the earlier the next morning. I will, sir. I will indeed, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Late that evening, Scrooge left his dreary office and went home to his dismal chambers. Uh, chambers once occupied by his dear partner, Marley. It was dark, and when he reached the house, he was amazed to notice that the knocker on the door was... Oh, I, I could have sworn that was Marley's face in the knocker. Oh, poof, rubbish, nothing to it. So up the stairs he went as boldly as he could and entered his dark, gloomy room. Yes. Darkness was cheap, and so he liked it, the old miser. Inside his rooms, everything appeared as it should be. Nobody under the table. Nobody under the sofa. Nobody in the closet. And nobody in his dressing gown, which was hanging up in a suspicious attitude against the wall. Quite satisfied, he locked the door, took off his coat, put on his dressing jacket and his pointed nightcap, and sat down before the fire to take his meager gruel. As he sat looking at the low fire, he suddenly realized that every tile about the grate had on it a copy of old Marley's face, staring at him. Humbug! Um, 
humbug. Don't believe it. Rubbish. Scrooge walked across the room. After several turns, he sat down again. He threw his head back in the chair. There was an old bell high up in the rooms, and it began to ring, while a noise downstairs made him start. What's that? Who's there? Who is it? Who is it? Suddenly, right through the wall, and then, behold, inside the room, Scrooge saw before his very eye. Mother! What do you want with me? Mark. Who are you? In life I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Don't you believe me? You don't. What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your own senses? Oh, because the little thing affects the senses. The slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. Oh, <laughs> oh mercy! Dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? Man of the world in mind. Do you believe in me or not? Oh, I do, I do, I do, I must. But, but why do spirits walk the earth? And why do they come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him to walk abroad among his fellow men <laughs> and travel far and wide and do good. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. Oh! No, please don't do that! <laughs> Your shackles. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Is it pattern strange to you? Jacob. Jacob Marley, tell me more. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. I'm done to give that an either food. In life my spirit never rose beyond the narrow limits of our many changing hole. And weary journeys lie before me. Tell me, my time is nearly gone. I will, I will. But don't be hard on me, Jacob. I'm here tonight to warn you that you get a chance and hope of escaping my fate, Ebenezer. Uh, you always were a good friend to me. Thank you. Hear what I say. You will be haunted by three spirits. Huh? Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Expect the second on the next night at the same hour. The third on the next night when the last stroke of twelve has seen to my face. Look to see me no more, and remember what has passed between us. When the ghost vanished in the dark, bleak night, Scrooge denounced the whole thing. Ah, I won't believe it. The whole business is rubbish. Humbug. Then he went to bed. He was soon asleep. <laughs> When Scrooge awoke, it was still dark. The chimes of a neighboring church had just struck twelve. Twelve o'clock. I was past two when I went to bed. That clock's wrong. An icicle must have got into the works. Twelve. It isn't possible I could have slept through the whole day and far into another night. <laughs> it isn't possible anything's happened to the sun. And it's twelve noon. He scrambled out of bed and groped his way to the window. All he could make out was that it was still very foggy and extremely cold. So back to bed he went and fought and fought and fought. He said he'd be here when the bell tolled one. <laughs> when that bell tolled one. Humbug. Oh. <gasps> the hour itself and nothing else. I knew it. <gasps> Suddenly a light flashed up in the room and the first of the promised spirit visitors stood before him. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Well, what brings you here? Your welfare. Oh, I'm much obliged for keeping an old man from his sleep. Your reclamation, then. Take ease. 
Ride and walk with me. But I'm mortal and I didn't liable to fall. There, by the touch of my hand. There. And you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall of the room. The city had vanished entirely. They stood upon an open country road with fields on either side. Do you know where you are? <laughs> Good heavens, I was raised in this place. I was a boy here. Ah, you recollect the way. Uh, I could walk in blindfold. Strange you had forgotten it for so many years. <laughs> Lead on, spirit. I'll follow. Come. Do you see that schoolhouse? Do you remember? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Of course you do. You see, the school is not quite deserted, even though it is Christmas Eve. A solitary child neglected by his friends is left there still. Do you know who that boy is? <gasps> of course I do. It's me. It's my own last boyhood. My poor forgotten self as I used to be. Poor lonely boy. I wish... Wish what? Uh, nothing. It's too late now. Too late for what? Nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> Last night, a boy was singing a Christmas carol at my door. I should have liked to have given him something. That's all. Come. Let us see another Christmas. The spirit led the way to many scenes that Scrooge had long forgotten. He was shown some happy Christmases of long ago when he was a youth. And best of all, the spirit took him to the warehouse where he had been an apprentice. Scrooge peeped in, and when he saw an old gentleman in a Welsh wig sitting at a high desk, he cried out, Why, it's old Fezziwig! Bless his heart, it's old Fezziwig alive again! <laughs> and there's Dick Wilkins. Oh, Dick was attached to me. Poor Dick. Dear Dick. No, oh, my boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas Ebenezer. Let's have the shutters up. Quicker than you can say, Jack Robinson, Mr. Fezziwig. As good as done. The floor swept and watered. Yes, sir. And the vents stripped. Yes, sir. And the fuel on the fire. Yes, sir. Then they home with their spear away and let's have lots of room. Hilly ho, Dick. Get up, Ebenezer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In came a fiddler with a music book. In came Mrs. Fezziwig, one vast, substantial smile. In came all the young men and women employed in the business. In they all came, one after another. And so the jolly party went on until 11 o'clock, when they parted as happy as happy could be. Wasn't Fezziwig a silly man? A silly man? Why, he was a wonderful man. A fine fellow. Why? Uh, oh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Something, I think. No, 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 no. No, I'd like to be able to say a word to my clerk, Bob Cratchit, that's all. My time grows short. Quick, let's be off. Now the spirit took him to another Christmas, when old Marley was lying at death's door. Oh, spirit. Show me no more. Conduct me home. Why do you delight in torturing me? One shadow more. No, no, more. No more. No, no. I don't want to see it. Show me no more. Spirit, remove me from this place. I told you these were shadows of the things that have been. If they are what they are, do not blame me. Remove me. I can't bear it. Take me back and haunt me no longer. Take me back. Take me back. There's no saying what else the spirit of Christmas past would have shown him had Scrooge not managed to get hold of the extinguisher which the spirit had been carrying. By pressing this down, Scrooge put out the light of the spirit like a snuff candle. Then he reeled into bed and sank into a heavy sleep. One o'clock. What's that? What's that ghostly light shining through the next room? I'll shut it out. Ebenezer, 
Come in. Come in and know me better, man. What do you want from me? What have you done to my room here? This is my room. But it's undergone a strange transformation. This holly and mistletoe. What does it mean, and who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Come closer. Fear me not. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. Gladly. Now, what do you see? I see bright colored lights, gaiety, children on sleds, playing in the snow. Do you see that house over there? The one with the Christmas wreath on the door? Of course. It's the humble home of my clerk, Bob Dratchett. He's carrying Tiny Tim, his little son. See the boy's little crutch and his helpless limbs. How tenderly his father holds him. Let's go closer. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dear. A Merry Christmas to us all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless us, everyone. That is Tiny Tim. See how close he sits to his father's side. And look, he's holding Tiny Tim's withered little hands in his. He fears of losing the man. Tell me, Spirit, if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner, and a crutch without an owner. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Oh, no, no, kind spirit. Say you live. Say you live. But the spirit whirled him on to many homes and places, showing him misery and want as well as happiness. Then the spirit vanished, and a new and different figure appeared. It came slowly and silently toward him. It was shrouded in a deep black garment, which left nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. This was the third and last of his ghostly visitors. Scrooge braced himself and said, Yes, 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 I know. You're the ghost of Christmas yet to come. I fear you more than any specter I've seen. But I know your purpose is to do me good. I'm prepared to bear you company. Lead on, spirit. Lead on. <laughs> to move, and Scrooge followed, and at length the ghost of Christmas yet to come brought him to a neglected gravestone. What's this? These awful weeds. I can hardly see. Whose name's written on this crumbled stone? What? It's Ebenezer Scrooge. Me? Oh, no, Spirit, no, no. Spirit, hear me. I, I'm not the man I was. I'll not be the man I must have been. Good spirit, pity me. Assure me I, I may yet change these shadows you've shown me by an altered light. I, I'll honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. Oh, tell me I may wipe off the writing of this terrible stone. In his agony, he caught the spectral hand, but the spirit repulsed him. As Scrooge held up his hands in a last prayer to have his fate reversed, he saw an alteration in the phantom shape. It began to shrink. It collapsed. And then... This bed, folks. Yes, yes. Why, it's my own. This bed is my own bed. My very own. This room. My own room. Oh, bless it all. I live the past, the present. And the future, I will, I will, the spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven and the Christmas time be praised for this. I say it on my knees, oh, Jacob, on my knees. I'm as light as a feather. I'm happy as an angel. I'm merry as a schoolboy. Hey, hello outside there. What is today? Christmas Day! I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. Hello, my fine fella. Hello. You know the poultry shop in the next street, the, 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 the one at the corner? Indeed, I do, sir. Oh, an intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. You know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? The little one? No, not little one. No, no, no. The, the, the big 
big one. What? The one as big as me? <laughs> what a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my lad. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go on and buy it. Are you joking? No, 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 no. I'm in earnest. Go and buy it and tell him to bring it here that I may give him the directions where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. I'll be back with him as quick as a shot, sir. <laughs> Look at him, Ron. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. He shan't know who sent it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. I'll send the poker with it and the cab so Cratchit will have it in time. No, then I'll hire myself to my nephew's home. Will they be surprised to see me? Ha, 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 ha. Dressed in his best, Scrooge at last got into the streets. People were pouring forth. Scrooge greeted everyone with a delightful smile and... Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! He went to church and gave a large donation for the poor. He walked gaily about the street. He never dreamed that any walk, that anything could give him so much happiness. In the afternoon, he arrived at his nephew's house. What can I do for you, sir? Is your master at home, my dear? Yes, sir. Where is he, my love? Why, bless my soul, who's that? It's I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, friend? Of course, Uncle. Make yourself at home. We'll have a wonderful party, wonderful games, and wonderful happiness. The next morning, Scrooge was early at the office. If he could just catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing he'd set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. Cratchit was full 18 minutes and a half behind his time. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him coming. Cratchit was on his stool in a jiffy. Then Scrooge came into the room. Hello. What do you mean by coming here this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. Yes, indeed you are. Oh, it's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. No, I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, therefore, <laughs> I'm about to raise your salary. Oh, a Merry Christmas, Bob. Oh, a Merry Christmas to you. A sir. Merry Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, that I've given you for many a year. I'll endeavor to assist your struggling family. Oh, sir. Make up the fires, my boy, and buy another scuttle of coal before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Yes, sir. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and more. And to tiny Tim, who did not die, he was the second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city in the good old world. He had no further experience of spirit, but lived a happy life ever afterward. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if anybody did. And may that truly be said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. Everyone. Yes, I need him. God bless us, everyone. Uh -huh.